Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about vectors and uh, covectors and why the gradient is considered a covector rather than a contravariant vector with the uh, indices as uh, superscripts and why it, come, it transforms as a covector. And basically, um, if you take a course in college on vectors and tensor analysis, you will find that they don't define vectors the way we've seen vectors defined in, say, a, a first-year physics course, which uh, you'll see it usually defined as uh, something with magnitude and direction. That's how they usually define a vector. Um, but mathematicians, they define a vector as a set of components that transforms according to a certain rule. And right here, this is the definition of a vector that we have, but they throw away the base vectors. They don't worry about the base vectors. They, they just say anything that transforms that way is a vector, and anything whose components transforms that way is a vector. And uh, a covector is defined to be a quantity whose components transform as follows when we uh, change a our coordinate system. So let's write a vector as a covector. So we're transforming to the prime coordinate system, so we put B prime sub alpha. And of course, uh, a covector has its indices as uh, subscripts. And our transformation matrix that's making this transformation possible is partial of x super gamma and we're taking our uh, partial derivatives with respect to x prime alpha and this is our original covector b sub gamma and note that the partial derivative for the covector transformation has the primed coordinate in the denominator of the partial derivative not the numerator and the applied summation is over the coordinates in the numerator and to make the summation work, the index on the covector must be a subscript, not a superscript, and that's very important. Putting a component label in the subscript position instead of the superscript position is what distinguishes uh, our covectors from ordinary vectors. And one important type of quantity that transforms as a covector is the gradient of a scalar function. So let's write out a a scalar function, which is going to be a, a function of our space-time coordinates, which are t, x, y, z. And in component notation, this is going to be v of x super mu. And we're considering an arbitrary scalar function of position whose values at any given event is frame independent and uh, the gradient of such a function is defined to be which is this is a short uh, shortcut notation for writing partial derivatives which is the partial sub mu operating in our scalar function which equals the partial of phi and we're taking partial derivatives with respect to x super mu and this is Right here, it's considered a, a subscript because uh, the end it, these indices are in the denominator, not the numerator. And this object has one component for each possible values of the free index mu. So in a four-dimensional space-time, it has four components. Now, according to the chain rule of partial differentiation, in calculus, the values of these components transforms as follows. So we're transforming to our prime coordinate system. So it's partial sub nu prime operating in our scalar function, which is going to equal in uh, the regular notation that we're used to accustomed to seeing partial sub phi operating with uh, taking our partials with x prime sub 
new and this is going to equal our partial operating on x sub mu and we're taking them with respect to x prime sub new and this is multiplying by multiplying our partial of our scalar function with respect to the x super mu coordinates and this e is going to equal our partial of x mu operating and uh, it's going to be taking our partials with respect to x prime sub nu and and of course partials with our scalar function and as you can see this gradient is transforming as a covector so this is basically why uh, the gradient is a covector because it transforms according to the transformations of a covector and if you compare this with our earlier transformation of a covector you will see that the components of the gradient do transform as the components of a covector so this is why the gradient is a covector I hope this helps uh, clear up any confusion anyone's having